I'm back. I don't know what happened to my live. Something happened. I don't know if you all uh, got kicked off or whatever, but I'm, we're going to start it over. We already did our praise and worship. We actually uh, worship with the song Anthony Brown. You can go back and worship uh, with us collectively in your own time. Anthony Brown, uh, worth. you thought I was worth saving. You thought I was worth changing. So you sacrificed your life. You thought I was to die for. And hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And so we're going to get started. I pray that you all will get back on. Good morning. I don't know what happened, Antoinette, but good morning. Thank you all for joining again. We're going to go ahead and get started because I don't know what that was about. I've never seen that message uh, on there before um, on Facebook, on live. I've never seen that message, but we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, nevertheless, God's business must go on. I won't, uh, Good morning, Marlon. Good morning, beloved. I don't know what happened, but I, you all weren't saying anything. Good morning, Antoinette, uh, the Antoinette number two. <laughs> I guess I'll give you one and two. Uh, good morning, Victor. Good morning, beloved. So what I'm going to do is, I'm, like I said, I won't be before you long, and I'm going to be short and simple. Okay, thank you, Marlon. Thank you for letting me know. Uh, we're going to come out of the book of uh, Luke chapter 6, verse 46 through 48. It's just going to be three little simple uh, verses that we're going to go over. Um, I pray you have your Bibles open, your phones, your tablets, your iPads, whatever manner of Bible that you use. And because I plan to teach from it, we're going to open up in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we bless you. We honor you. We magnify you. We just thank you for such a time as this. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for your power, your anointing. We ask that you fill us today, oh God, that you will anoint us afresh creating us a clean heart and renewing us a right spirit. Lord, please forgive us of any things that, sins that we've committed in your sight via thought, word, or deed. God, we ask that you search our hearts, know us, and trust us if there be any ancient or wicked ways in us and lead us in the way everlasting. God, we ask that you purge us and cleanse us with hyssop, oh God. I ask that you prepare our hearts and minds to receive your word, oh God. Lord, I pray that you will be glorified and that your body will be edified. And Lord, I pray that you would take over, hide me behind the cross, that they may not see me, but see you, the Father, and glorify you in heaven. Have your way. Take over. Do what only you can do. Be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, Patricia. Good morning, beloved. Like I said, I, wouldn't, I won't be before you long. And I have three verses that we're going to look over. Um, it's called the in Luke's, Luke chapter 6, verse 46 through 48. And the title of this uh, this chapter is Parable of the Two Foundations. And so Luke chapter 46, uh, chapter 6, verse 46, is, it uh, commits at verse 1 and 46. It says, but why do you call me Lord and do not do the things which I say? Whoever comes to me and hears my saying and does them, I will show you whom he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug a deep and he dug deep and laid a foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently against the house and he could not shake it. For it was founded on a rock. It says, but he who heard and did nothing is like a man who built a house on the earth without a foundation against which the stream beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. I pray God will add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his most holy and precious word and I'll be prayerful as I tag my title today the character of a true disciple. On Friday, we spoke about, we talked about the blueprint of a disciple. What is a disciple responsible for? And I'm going to, today I'm going to give you three characteristics of a disciple. A disciple, as we, um, like, as we discussed, is, uh, is in the learn, is a, is a contributing learner and follower of Christ. That's what a that's what uh good morning justice that's what the definition of a disciple is a learner of Christ a contributing committed follower of Christ there's a difference when somebody learns about Christ but am I I'm following him but am I committed to Christ 
So I would add those three is a learner of Christ, but also a committed contributing follower of Christ. That is the formula of a disciple. And now that we know what a disciple is, and we learned on Friday about the disciples cross. And anytime that you're following Jesus, you're going to, the cross is going to be attached to us. The cross when Jesus died on was the cross was a shameful, rugged death. A, a cross was nothing to be proud of. It's where the thieves and different people, murderers, that's where they were killed. They were killed on a cross. Jesus was pinned between two thieves. And he took on our sin. He who knew no sin became sin for us all. He took up on, on all of our past, our present, and any future sins that we would ever create, if we would ever do. He took them upon himself. He was a lamb who knew no sin without a, without a, any blemishes, became sin for us all. And so must Jesus bear the cross alone and the whole world go free. So anytime that you are follow, you and I are following Christ, the cross is attached to us. Good morning, Alameda. Good morning, beloved. It's going to be, the cross is going to be attached to us. And as we talked about on Friday, Luke 9, 23, if anyone should come after me, he must first deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow after Christ because that's going to require us to deny ourselves. It's going to require, require for us to not be about ourselves, to make, and then the next one, we're going to make Jesus our center. It's got to be all about Jesus. It can't be about what we want. I, I don't want to do that. I'm not going to do that. It's got to be about Jesus. Jesus has to be our center. Everything that we do, everything that we are, everything that we even hope to be, it's got to be revolved around Jesus. He's got to be our center. A John 15 and 5. Good morning, Shonda. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me, abide in me, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So as a believer, as a disciple, there's nothing we can do in and of ourselves. And when we are a disciple and we're being disciple, it's all about Christ. It's not about us anymore. He said, it's not about us, but it's about Jesus. And so our life is, we have been, we died to ourselves, not physically, but spiritually. We've died to ourselves and our, in our flesh and our spirit man should be nourished and not malnourished. And so we are old, new creatures. Old things have, been, have passed away. Behold, all things have become anew. And once we've done that, now we're going to be in God's word because we as new babes, after we've heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, we should be desiring pure milk of the word. We should be desiring since we've tasted that we heard the gospel preached. And now we've tasted that the Lord is good, that we should be desiring the pure milk of the word. And so now we're living in the word. We're going to hold to his teaching, John 8, 31, 32. Then we will know the truth and the truth will make us free. God is an amazing God. He is an awesome God. And he wants us to be about his son, Jesus. He died on the cross and paid the sin debt that we owe but could not pay. And because we have accepted him as our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, now we are in the army of the Lord. We are soldiers in the army of the Lord. We are disciples. That means we have denounced, renounced our life. Our, we have abandoned those things. We have let go of those sinful ways. And as we were sanctified, we've been set apart for the service and the mission of Christ Jesus. We're set apart. And so we've eight John 8, 31, 32, we've living in the word because we want to know more about God's word. We desiring it as a pure milk, pure milk, like a babe. So everything we want to do, we want to learn and see what does God require for me as a disciple? And so I'm living in the word. And so now I can pray in faith. If I, John 15, 7, if I remain in him, his word remains in me. I can ask the father what I will and shall be given. And I'm going to start like fellowship with like believers because now I'm a disciple. I'm living the life of Christ. Old things. I'm laying aside all these sins. I'm laying aside every weight that so easily besets me. I'm actually laying, I'm, I'm laying aside malice. I'm laying aside envy. I'm not jealous or envy of anybody. I'm not speaking evil of people. I'm not being a hypocrite. I'm not telling somebody one thing and I'm doing another. And so I'm changing my life because, because when the Holy Spirit indwells the Holy, you can't do this. We cannot do this in and of ourselves. Remaining in Christ, 
is how we're going to be able to bear this fruit and live a life that we to, to renounce this sinful life through the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit working in every believer. Because once we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, every the Holy Spirit indwells every believer. And we have to trust in the power, the same power that they raised. Jesus Christ from the dead is the same power that worketh in every believer. Are we going to tap in it? Are we going to walk in it? Because we got to lay aside all this sin, all these weighted things that's been weighted us down. We can't live a life that brings God's glory because we're too busy and we're too focused on living in sin. And sin weights us down. Sin torments us. Sin is not our friend. So we have to make Jesus our center. We got to live in fellowship with like believers. Be around people that are building us up in the body. Some pe Being around people that exhorts us. Being around people that encourages us. And so he said, this command, this new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you. By this, they will know that you are my disciples because y'all loving on each other. Y'all are partnership. Y'all are in the body of Christ. And you all are being edified. And you all are growing in the faith. And you're loving one another as I have loved you. And they were witnessing to the world because when you have the support of the body of Christ and you're fellowship and exhorting one another and you're holding one another accountable, now you can go out and have strength when you go out and evangelize and witness to and witness to the world because this is to my father's glory that you bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And this is shows that you are his disciples when we bear much fruit. And so now the three characteristics of a, of a disciple, I'm going to give you three and I'll be out of your way because in order to be a disciple, he says, why in Luke 46, Luke 6, good morning, Mary, good morning, beloved. It said Luke 6, 46, it said, but why do you call me Lord? Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and you do not do what I say? Because when someone is Lord of our lives, that means they, they rule us. They, we do what they say. They tell us when, if you like, they said the Lord of the Rings, the king, the king tells everybody, everybody's at the king's disposal. Whatever the king says happens. You can't even go to the king any old kind of way. When the king has to hand out his, you want to go see the king, he must put out his scepter in order for you to come up, come, even come into his presence. And so we, 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 we up, we obeying a king, an earthly king, but the Lord of God, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, Jesus, we want to go to him any old kind of way. And we want, we'll honor somebody, a man, a mere man, more we'll honor the true and living God. It said the true, the characters of a, the character of a true disciple. Why would you call me Lord, Lord, and you don't do what I say? And he said, I'm going to tell you what a true disciple looked like. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you that it's like, a, it's like a man that when uh, they dug a deep, they dug deep and they built the foundation and when the storm came vehemently and storm and just hit them and hit them and hit them, it, they didn't shake because they were rooted and grounded in the word of God. That's what a true disciple is because you're living in the word and you're walking by faith and not by sight. And so a storm can come. Yes, it's going to hurt us. It's going to hit us, but it's not going to tear down our foundation because our foundation is built on a rock. Good morning, Jojo. It's built up on a rock. The rock of our salvation. Jesus, the rock of Jesus. The rock of ages. And so it's not going to fall down. He said, but you call me Lord and you don't do what I say. But I'm going to tell you what it is. I'm going to tell you who is really mine. I'm going to tell you what is mine. Because if you walk in my ways, then when the storm comes, if you don't walk in my ways, and then you just like a, a someone who built, a man who built his, his house on the earth on the ground and so when the rain comes and the storm vehemently hits immediately it tears it down and it's destroyed and so what he's saying is like it's immediately destroyed because you didn't have a foundation your foundation wasn't wasn't on the word of god your foundation wasn't on the rock so when storms come it knocks and just tosses us all types of ways and tosses us to and fro because it wasn't a solid foundation and so uh, three points about a disciple, a true disciple, and I'll be out of your way. Uh, disciple of Christ, a true disciple of Christ walks in obedience. He says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and you do not do what I say? What is it that keeps you and I from obeying God? It's sin. Sin separates us from God. When we walk in disobedience, we walk in sin, we disobey God. In order to show that we love God, we must settle 
the first step, which is obedience. John 14 and 15 says, Jesus replied, if you love me, you will keep my commands. Good morning, Minyata. Good morning, beloved. If you love me, you'll keep my word. Father, I love you, but I'm walking in sin. I'm, I'm walking in habitual sin. I'm, I'm practicing sin and I'm doing my own thing. But I say I love the Lord. He said, if you love me, you will keep my commands. That means you will abide in my word. You will keep my word. My father will save him and he will come to him and make our home with him. We can't say we love him and walk in willful disobedience at the same time. When he, the father, lives in us, obedience is a characteristic that is apparent in a disciple's life. Are we going to sin and fall short of the glory? Glory of God, do we make mistakes? Yes. We make mistakes. We are human. We sin and fall short of the glory of God. But once we accept Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, <clears throat> excuse me, we can go to God and, and we can ask for forgiveness. We can confess our sins. We First John 1 and 9 says, if I confess my sin, he is faithful and he is just to forgive me and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And so we are human. That does happen. But we will not, if we love God, we will not be walking around living a life of habitual practice sin. Amen. If we are abiding in the vine, we will be focusing on bearing fruit for the kingdom of God. We will be living a lie. We're realizing that apart from him, we can do nothing. Yes, we are housing this thing called flesh. And we're sinners saved by grace. And the temptations in life will come at us. And, <clears throat> excuse me. They'll throw us all type of things on a daily basis. But Luke 9, 23 says, if any man should come after me. He must first deny himself. That means we're denying our flesh, denying our desires, denying our will and our wants. Deny ourselves. Take up his cross daily, our cross daily, and follow after him. We are committed, contributing, learner of Christ. These are the characteristics of a true, <clears throat> excuse me, disciple. James 1, 22 through 24 says, we are just excuse me we are we are not we are just not just hearers only we deceive ourselves when we just hear us only but be sure if you are a hearer and not a doer also he is like a man who looks in the mirror beholds our face and walks away and forget what we look like and we've been walking around with ourselves all this time i'm 51 <clears throat> God grace by God's grace. I just turned 51 in March, 51 years old. And I've been looking at myself for a long time. And so I should know myself what I look like. Even when I close my eyes, I still know what I look like because I've been rolling with me for a long time. And so James is saying that if you're going to be a hearer of the word and not a doer also, you're just going to be hearing what the word of God says, but I have no intentions of obeying. I have no intentions of doing what the word of God says. I have no intentions of being obedient. Then I'm like a man who looks in the mirror and I behold myself. I look and see what I look like and I walk away and I forget what I look like. That's what James is saying about a, a person that is just hearing the word, going to church on Sunday, whatever day you go to church, going to church, hearing the word, reading the word, but has no intentions of doing what the word of God says. And so, so when we know when we look and we say the second one, it says a true disciple is a one who walks in obedience. Point number two, a true disciple of Christ walks in love. John 14, 15, 34, 35. This was our scripture. This, this new commandment I give you that you love one another as I have loved you. By this, they will know that you are my disciples when you have love for one another. How can we say we love God whom we never seen? And we hate our brother and sister. He said we are liar. For we can't love God. John 14, John, 1 John 4 and 20. God didn't tell us to love someone's sin. He asked us to forgive them, but still love them. God wants us to love those that are around, those who mistreat us, those who despitefully use us and speak all manner of evil against us. He wants us to love them. God doesn't give us any leeway. Love. He commanded us to love. He wants us to love one another. And the way others are 
if they love us or don't love us, God still commanded us to love them. And so the, the true characteristics of a, of a disciple is we must walk in obedience. A true disciple of Christ, we must walk in love. He said, we said we love God. We never seen, but we hate our brother and sister. He said, we a liar. And he said, there's no truth in us. We're a liar. We deceive ourselves. And so this is love. Characteristics of a, a true disciple is walking in obedience to God and walking in love, love for God because he first loved us and loving for our, our brother and sister. Amen. Our third point, I said I won't be before you long. Uh, a true disciple bears of Christ bears fruit for the kingdom. This is our number one job description. When we love and obey Christ Jesus, our lifestyle is apparent. That we to this world, and people are drawn to us. This uh, entails, and it gives an opportunity for us to be able to witness, be able to opportunity for us to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. When they see that we're walking in love, and they see that we're walking in obedience to Christ, they're gonna wonder, how can I get where you are? Because you've shown me how it is attainable, and so we should be lifting up the Father, so He's gonna do the drawing. As we lift up Christ Jesus, He's gonna draw all men unto Him, and that's gonna be as John 12 and 32. It is God who does the drawing, not us. He plants some plant, some water, but ultimately God gets the increase. We are to walk in obedience to Christ, the characteristics of a disciple. We learned on Friday the, the, the blueprint. Good morning, Maddie. Good morning, beloved. We learned on Friday that the uh, the blueprint of a disciple, we learned that on Friday, but today we learned three characteristics of a disciple. We must be obedient to Christ. We must walk in love and we must bear fruit that is our number one job description we must bear fruit for the kingdom of god that's our job we if you abide in me say, i'm the vine and you are the branches if you remain in me you will bear much fruit apart from me you can do nothing in order for, in order for us to god is the vine dresser jesus is the vine and or and we are the branches in order for the the, the branch to bear fruit it got it has to be we have to be connected to the the vine so we get our nutrients and that's where the leaves and that's where it's going to grow and that's where the fruit is going to start because if we're not connected to the vine as we learned on friday we're going to be fall off on it to the ground we're going to wither dry up wither up and die and later to be cast into the fire those are three little pointers that I have for you today. I said I wasn't going to be before you long. I have somewhere to be, and you can go ahead and be, go where you have to be. But the true characteristics of a true disciple is to be obedient to God. If you, you love me, you'll obey my command. If you love me, he said in Luke 6, 46, he says, but why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not, and not do what I ask you to do, and not do what I tell you to do? How do you call me Lord, Lord, and you're disobedient? And so the true three characteristics of a true disciple is to walk in obedience to Christ and to love God and love your neighbor as yourself. And the last one is to bear fruit for the kingdom of God. We should all be advancing the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God should be growing. It, it, we're walking around, we're living in the world and we're, we're stagnant. And God said, I'm coming back. Jesus is going to come back. And how's he going to find us? And so our job, we should be on our, on our job. We should be living a life and not being at ease like everything is well. Uh, we're going to sound the alarm that we as believers have been sleeping on the job. And you know that they're, that's frowned upon when you and I sleep on the job because they don't pay you and I to sleep. So we sound the alarm today that you and I need to realize it and get up and not be at ease and not be thinking that everything is fine. We're good. We're not good. He's going to come back. How is he going to find us? And you don't know when your time is running out. And so you should work while it's daylight because when the night comes, no man can work because at night it's dark and, and everybody, the businesses are closed. So how are you going to work when it's dark? So he said in the in the spiritual, he said, work while a daylight, because when it comes dark, no man can no man can work. And so we pray that today and it will be, it'll be like the the five foolish uh, uh, virgins that had the five of them foolish ones and five wise ones. And when it was time, they had a they had a, a lantern, but they didn't have no oil in it. The foolish ones and the one that were wise when it was time when the bridegroom was coming, the bridegroom is coming, the bridegroom is coming. And when they said, heard that, can I, can I borrow some of your oil? They was like, no, I only have enough for myself. You should go back to the store, go to the store and buy some. And they lay in the hour. They go and they buy, try to buy some. But while they were gone, the bridegroom came and he took the five wise, wise uh, virgins that were ready. 
He took them with him. And when they came back, they were knocking on the door. The door was closed and they were knocking on the door and they're going to be gnashing of the teeth. They're going to be burning the lake of fire. Life is going to be over for that's going to be over with. And so we don't want to be left found with our work undone. So the characteristics, I gave you three of a true disciple. And today, if you don't know Jesus Christ and the part of your sins, today is a great day to do so. All you got to do is be willing to admit that you are a sinner. Be willing to turn from your sins. Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart that Jesus died on the cross for our sins and that God raised it from the grave on the third day with all power and authority in his hands. It's the gift of God by grace through faith that anyone should boast. Ephesians 2, and 2, 8, and 9. Get into a Bible-based church where a preacher or teacher can teach you about the word of God so you'll be able to give a reason of hope that lies within you. We learn the blueprint of a disciple and we learn what characteristics of a true disciple. We must be obedient to Christ Jesus. And we must be able to love Christ and love one another as I have loved you. By this, they will know that you are my disciples when you have love for one another because the world is going, is dying and they're watching the church stumble over themselves. They're watching over the church backbiting each other. They're watching over the church lying and stealing and killing, doing the same thing that the world is doing. There's no distinction between the world and the church and there should be some distinction. It ought not be so. And so we want us to love one another and he wants us to go out and, and evangelize. He wants to go out and to preach and teach the word of God so those lost souls can be saved because somebody had to tell us that's why we are saved but now we're going to be secret agents and keep it to ourselves God forbid that we do that and so we know what it is look what that looks like so I pray that you all would um just know that God loves you he loves us so much that he sent his son to pay a sin debt that we owe but could not pay heavenly father I followed your assignment I pray that you would prepare the hearts of your people to continue to to hear your word and to apply it to their lives, to make it applicable. We don't want to be like James 1 when it says a man that looked in the mirror and behold ourselves and walk away and forget what we look like. We don't want to be found like that, God, because we know who we are in Christ Jesus. We don't want to hear the word and then walk away and we don't even know what, what was taught. We don't want to go and walk away and then the life, the troubles of life just come and, and choke it out of us. Or And we just want to be, I pray it'll fall on fertile ground. It'll, it'll fall on ground that uh, ground that be able to take it and apply it and run with it. And so their lives will be changed and other lives will be saved and changed by knowing us. Have your way today, God. Bless your people. You get the glory. And let your people be edified. Have your way in Jesus' name. Beloved, I love you all so much. God bless each of you. I pray that you have a wonderful day. I love you and God loves you way, 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 way more than anybody could ever love you. Don't, uh, don't fall for the lie. Know who, who you are in Christ. Amen. Bye.